Hey GearHeads, Jeff with Gear Report. It's gear-report.com. I'm going to show you something kind of new and innovative here. They call it Vessel, V-S-S-L, Vessel. It is a container. We have their supplies model that has a variety of different um, survival type supplies in it. So. Uh, this is an unboxing and initial review here. Uh, as you can see, I've not gotten it out of the box before. It comes with three uh, E90 batteries. It's a new one for me. I thought I was pulling uh, double A's or triple A's out. It's actually a different, uh, different type of battery than I've seen before. You can see this contents. We got a lot of things in here: uh, LED flashlight, compass, beeswax candle, razor blade, water purification tablets, a wire saw, first aid supplies, aluminum beadless emergency whistle. Interesting. Okay, waterproof matches, tinder quick fire starters, fishing gear, signal mirror, marine grade rope, 250 pound breaking strength, uh, reflective trail markers a GI type can opener and some instructions vessel priorities of survival and instruction that's kind of small I mean this is uh, I think the website said it's about nine inches long it's a lot to fit in there so let's have a look at it let's see how it lives up to the billing it did pretty high expectations based on what we see there okay so at this end you see a liquid filled compass that's a big liquid filled compass actually I'm surprised at how large that is. You see it says supplies right here. We'll take this off. Very nice machining on this. I'm impressed with the effort they took. Oh wow! The effort they took to get the machining nice and clean. Um, under certain burning conditions the end cap can get quite hot. Remove this prior to lighting. A little idiot warning here. So I'm sure that the, uh, their attorney made them put that there even though it should be pretty obvious that a burning candle is going to get hot. It says this candle will burn for about six hours. So I think that is the, probably the reason it has a beeswax candle in here because they have a little different burn characteristics than uh, some other types of wax. All right, what else do we have here? What? I'm just going to start getting these out. Wire saw. Fishing tackle. Trail markers, can opener, water purification, rope and razor blade, fire starter mirror, first aid. All right, doesn't want to come out any further here. There we go. I don't think that was supposed to come out. That looks like the cap for the battery. What I'm trying to get in here is their little instruction sheet that seems to be kind of stuck. Ah, there we go. Took some work, but got... Let's have a look at this real quick. <laughs> All right, this is clever. Within this vessel are some essential tools for self-preservation. However, the most important aspect of survival is the ability to keep a positive attitude uh, I can tell you, as a proud graduate of the U.S. Air Force Air Crew Survival School, that's pretty much true. I don't consider myself a survival expert, but I've certainly had a higher level of survival training than uh, most people have. Uh, all right, we have priorities, signaling, how to use, some examples of how to use a variety of different materials that come in the kit. But from what I can see so far, it Kind of impressive. They've whittled down a variety of potential uses into some very succinct, brief instructions in a format that fits within their their, their vessel. I, I like that's a clever name, by the way. All right, so let's work our way through here. Looks like all three batteries go in there. So let's go ahead and take this apart the rest of the way. All right, here we go. That is hollow. Once we get it apart, set that there. And for the flashlight, it says it is a uh, SOS mode or flood beam light. 
static rest OS. Go ahead and put the batteries in here, see what it looks like. And we'll take all three of these LR11 1.5 volt batteries. Again, it, it's listed as an E90 battery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's bright. All right, one push comes on. Second push, that's dimmed slightly. Third push is flash, and then fourth is off. All right, so there's our flashlight. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna start putting things back together as we use them. So there's the flashlight. Um, this was hard enough to get out. I'm gonna actually put that at the bottom when we put it back together so that it will not get wedged up in the top uh, like it did before. Here, we'll put that there. All right, and we have looked at the beeswax candle, wire, saw. Aha, so that is a pretty robust wire saw. It looks like it's got four strands. One, two, three, four, yeah. Um, each one wrapped in a smaller wire. So it's got a core wire with a, a wire wrapped around it. And there are four of those that are woven together to make this saw with a uh, little cloth on each end to hold on to. That's a nice touch. I've seen a lot of these wire saws in survival kits. When I was growing up and Rambo, the movie came out, the Rambo survival knife was all the rage. These little wire saws tucked in a survival knife were everywhere. And if you ever tried to use one, it's pretty miserable without something to hold on to. Just holding on to that bare metal and trying to saw through something is not really fun. So. Uh, you definitely aren't doing yourself any favors if you injure yourself while preparing shelter or firewood or whatnot. Uh, in a survival situation, uh, you certainly <laughs> it's hard enough to survive sometimes. You don't need to make it more difficult by injuring yourself. So that's a nice touch, having the ability to, to hold on to something a little easier on your hands. All right, fishing tackle. Oh my. Little, uh, reflective spinner. This looks like three swivels and a couple weights. That's a, I don't know how much fishing line that is, but it, it's for a survival situation, a lot of people can fish with that. It's a nice sinker weight. I don't know how many hooks are in here. I'm going to guess that's probably eight or ten hooks. And even these are not gummy worms, all right? Keep them away from the kids. These are uh, little rubber fishing worms, three of them. So that is a fairly robust little fishing kit. Um, kind of surprised, to be honest with you, that uh, that much is in here. They've certainly figured out how to put a good variety of things in this small little Trail markers and a whistle. Oh, look at those. All right, these are push pins, thumbtacks, whatever you want to call them. Not your typical variety that you would find in an office or a, a school cork board. Um, they are bigger around, they're flat, a little heavier uh, instead of curved, and they have your little trail marker sticker on them. There are a bunch of them in here. And here is the beadless whistle. Yeah, that's loud, and it's a good high pitch. You know, that high pitch travels uh, a lot easier, a lot further distance, gets people's attention. All right, and I'm not sure how many of these are in there, but I'm going to guess there's probably at least 10 of each color, maybe more. Nice. That aluminum whistle is going to be pretty durable, it looks like. You know, not one of the little plastic ones that can break easy. Can opener, water purification. So you have instructions to use aqua tabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there are ten of these aqua tabs. Expiration January 2020. That's meaningful. It's really important 
when you're using something as critical as water purification uh, that they have shipped with something that's going to last a few years. This uh, November 2015 as we're looking at this, so you got a few years out it uh, that you'll be able to use this. Add one tablet to one liter of water. These are small, they're light. You're going to have to use a lot of them to do a meaningful quantity of water, but at least you got a head start on some potable water. Old school P38 military style can opener, good thing to have. Moving on, rope and razor blade. Ah, that is a wooden spool. That almost looks like an old school yo-yo. That's kind of neat. This line, 250 pound breaking strength, it says. I'd be interested to know what this is. Looks like a synthetic fiber, like a spectra. I'll have to do some research, see if I can sort out what that is. It's got to be one of these, uh, you know, relatively modern filament fibers that they use to weave these synthetic uh, ropes to have 250 pound breaking strength with that very, very small uh, diameter. Uh, standard razor blade with a little safety cardboard on it, so. I like that. Does it say how many feet that is? It does not. Fishing line, the rope, they seem to give you a, enough to make a good shelter and some other things potentially. Fire starter and mirror. Okay, here's our mirror on the back side and uh, it's got a little protective coating so it's not, doesn't look that reflective. It's kind of hazy. It's because it has a protective coating on it. We're going to leave that there. It just peels off. Oh, check these out. These are like little mini tampon sections that are soaked in fire starter. Um, or maybe they're cotton balls that have had a little bit of netting wrapped around them to hold them tight um, and soaked in some sort of uh, combustible agent. And then um, wet proof matches, that's good, with the striker on the inside. So nice little fire starting kit. I'm a big fan of cotton balls soaked in Vaseline as something to put in a survival kit. You know, when I go camping with the Boy Scouts, uh, I will often have some dryer lint and some cotton balls soaked in Vaseline in my pack with me, uh, just in case we need it. First aid and mini medical kit. This is a larger container. So we have tape, pain relief. This is acetaminophen. Interesting. Acetaminophen, aspirin, a little caffeine in here. I don't know. I can't pronounce it. But it says it's an NSAID, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. That's harder to say than you might expect. All right, so we got pain zapper. We have a couple antiseptic towelettes. Those are good. Got to get things clean so you don't get infected. All right, these are... Genuine first aid. These are band-aids. All right, uh, band-aid. I believe is a brand term. So these would be what adhesive bandage strips, something like that. Adhesive bandages. So one, two, six. So that's eight of these. Fold it up nicely to stick in there. And uh, butterfly bandages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those as well. Butterflies are great for wound closure. I really like seeing that in here. You know, close up that wound and clean it, close it up. What do we got here? This is like a knuckle bandage. Nice. And for safety pins. All right. You can actually make uh, kind of improvised stitches with something like this you know, uh, wound closure in a really bad situation. I hate it if you got to use safety pins for wound closure, but uh, we got a couple different, the, the eight butterflies will let you close some moderate sized wounds, bandages, adhesive bandages to cover things up and seal out any uh, stuff that might be getting in there. Might try to get in there. All right. Growing up, it always amazed me at Christmas. You get stuff and you open it up at Grandma's house 
and use it and then you can't fit it all back in. So far we've had everything out and it seems to all be going back in pretty well. So, so that's what we have. Tell me something. We do a lot of firearms, firearms accessories, firearms stuff, shooting, hunting, do occasional tactical stuff or more product evaluation, how you use it's up to you. When you see this, I'll tell you that is a sensitive little switch there. I accidentally turned it on a couple times. When you look at this, what do you see? Um, certainly a very nice package, uh, fairly heavy duty. Um, I mean very heavy duty aluminum. This isn't light. This isn't something you carry backpacking with you. Looks to me a lot like what people like to call a solvent trap. So you know what a solvent trap is? A solvent trap is conceptually uh, taking a tube like this. I think a lot of people will use a flashlight like Great Lakes. You can use a mag light, you know, a D-cell mag light. And you take off the head with the flashlight and um, put a, a flat cap on it. Uh, in the back side, the flashlight cap will be solid, and you take the, the spring out, drill a hole in it, thread it. So you put a threaded cap on this end, a solid cap on this end. For use as a solvent trap, as it is overtly advertised and sold, you don't drill this end, you leave it solid. The threaded end goes on a threaded barrel of a pistol or a rifle, so that as you are cleaning, if it's on the end of the barrel, you clean from the breech end, any of the cleaning solvent is going to run out into that solvent trap. So that nasty mess that comes out and gets all over the floor or whatever when you're cleaning uh, is caught in the solvent trap. So it's really, uh, and I'm told it, that they actually work really well for that. That's what it's overtly sold for. A solvent trap, I think more often than not, what, what the people selling them are trying to do is give the consumer something that is easily converted into a suppressor by using something like freeze block plugs from, a, from an engine uh, inside, a stack of them, which, you know, when I first saw the pictures of the vessel, when they, they ask if, uh, if I'd like to review one, I'm looking at the pictures thinking, oh, that's cute. You have created a home suppressor kit that is disguised as a survival kit. So as I have received this, I'm looking at this tube, and, and this is heavy duty. It's well made. It's well threaded. This could probably be used as the foundation of a homemade suppressor. We're actually making one. We're, I say we're making one. Uh, we have parts from SD Tactical Arms that we received. We took some pictures. We sent them to WMD guns to be uh, nickel boron coated. And then they sent them back to SD Tactical Arms who are holding them until our Form 1 clears. So um, the ATF Form 1, lets you, uh, when when it is approved, then you have permission to manufacture a suppressor or a silencer. So understand when I'm talking about this, there are illegal ways to do it. And I think a lot of people who buy the solvent traps, that's what they have in mind. I'm not advocating that whatsoever. You can buy a solvent trap kit that is, you know, basically a, a silencer kit in disguise and fill out a Form 1 and legally create a suppressor. So understand I'm not advocating anything illegal here, but if you're going to make one, why not start with part of work all already done and buy a kit that makes it easier for you. Anyhow, that's what I thought this was when I first saw it. As I'm looking at it, the tube you could probably reuse. These containers that I thought, oh, isn't that clever? These little containers will make great baffles. Just drill your holes through the middle um, for, for the bullet to travel through and they're already stacked up and ready to go, but this, this metal's too light. One of these, was it fishing? Yeah, fishing tackle's already got a dent in the side. This wouldn't work. So unfortunately, if like me, you looked at this and thought, oh, these vessel people are so clever, they've figured out a different way to sell home suppressor kits um, without calling it a solvent trap, which you know everyone pretty much knows. In most cases, the people have no intention of using it as a solvent trap, although I'm told they actually work really well as solvent traps. I don't think that's what most people buy them for. Since I've been through this, the, you know, this end cap, there's no way to convert this easily 
into you know the threaded end to go on a barrel. I don't think there's really an easy way to do this end either to make it the exit end uh, or the threaded end for that matter. So I don't think either of these end caps would work. Certainly the containers on the inside are not sufficient to make baffles. The only thing potentially usable is the tube and to be honest with you why spend this much money to have kind of a covert way to make a silencer. Doesn't make sense to me. There are a whole lot cheaper ways to do it. Much to my disappointment, this is not a silencer kit in disguise. Uh, from a practical standpoint, I suppose you could make one out of this tube, but I, I'm a little concerned about these uh, score marks in it creating a weak point, and it costs too much for that. This kit's about $100, and you know, looking at all the thought and the craftsmanship that went into this, that may not be a bad price. Um, I initially thought, wow, that's a lot of money, but honestly, it, it looks like a pretty reasonable value for all the thought that's gone in it, the nice instructions that come with it. It's a good assortment of what look to be pretty high quality bits in here, like the rope. That clearly is a higher grade rope than you find in most survival kits. The fishing line has probably got 10 times as much line as I've seen in most little compact survival kits. So is it worth 100 bucks? That's up to you to decide. To me, th this looks like a reasonable value. And if you're looking for a gift for someone who does outdoor stuff, or maybe you live in a, a climate or in an area that it'd be good to have something in your car, a survival kit in your car, this, <laughs> this is a nice compact way to store, compact and durable way to throw it in the trunk of the car, you know, tuck it under the car seat, put it in the glove box, uh, and you've got it there with some, a high quality flashlight. And, and a variety of good things. It's not a long-term survival kit. This is, uh, you know, get you out of a bad situation that, that hopefully doesn't last too long type thing. But great gift idea. Uh, I know I would find it incredibly uh, interesting and be happy if someone gave me one of these. So let us know what you think. Like I said, a little bit of disappointment that this that the vessel is not a sneaky way to sell a, a silencer kit because I think those are neat, especially knowing that you can you can use them legally. A, a pretty well thought out, well designed, well stocked, and looks like well made survival kit. So. They have a variety of different models. This is the supplies model. They also have today, you know, we're talking about uh, November 2015, they have a first aid version, they have a shelter version. Shelter, that's one of the things I noticed is there's no shelter in here. But looking at the pictures, the shelter is a, is, looks like a rolled up metallic mylar type shelter that takes up, a, it looks like at least half of the tube, but that one's only $60 a blank empty vessel that has you know, the two ends. It does not have the candle holder in the compass end, but it has a flashlight on the other. It is $45.50. The zombie version that has a big spike in the middle, $59.50. Not sure why you would actually need that, but a nice novelty item. <laughs> and the flask version that actually will hold your beverage of choice, has a bottle opener and a collapsible shot glass that comes in one of these little tins and actually stands up for $72.50. So a lot of different options here. Um, any of these, they sell you refills that range from about $6 to, I think the most expensive one was $15. Let's look at refills here. First aid, fire starter and mirror, $6. Fishing tackle, $6. So a variety of them in that range. Blank tin for $250, a large one for $450, one with a screw on top for $450. Yeah, so you can you can replace all of these items. Uh, the most expensive one I see on here looks like $15. Is that right? A lot, lot of different uh, options. You can also switch things up if you'd like. Ah, 30 trail markers. So looking at the option to replace the trail markers tin, it says there are... 30 trail markers in there. So that would be 15 of each color. Let's see, for rope, 25 feet of 250 pound breaking strength rope. So 25 feet is not an incredibly huge amount, but you, you can do a lot with that. Fire starter and mirror. Those little uh, tampon looking things are called Tinder Quick Fire Starters. All right, that's what we have about Vessel. First impression, looks like a pretty good kit. I think it'd make a great gift. Uh, if you're looking at uh, the holidays or birthdays for someone who does outdoor stuff, 
Uh, this is a great thing to throw in a hunting vehicle. You know, so when you drive out to do your hunting, you've got something in the vehicle with you. Uh, probably not a backpacking item because it weighs a bit much. Could be good to have. You know, we, we've got a boat that we stay on. This could be uh, a good option to have on there. Variety of different things you can use it for. Looks pretty good to me. Let us know what questions or comments you have. You can find them at vsslgear.com. I'll put some links up for you to some of the different items in this review so you can go uh, check them out. You don't have to worry about typing all that. Gearreport.com, gear-report.com. Check us out. we got a lot of other reviews, a lot of firearm stuff, a lot of camping stuff. We've got some more camping things on the way. If you like this sort of stuff, we got some backpacks, some backpacking food coming, a variety of different items in, in the camping and outdoors area we're going to look at. You can follow us on our YouTube channel. Please do that. Please like this video. It means a lot to us. It really helps with our rankings, which lets us get more cool stuff that we can review and share with you. We're all over social media, so go check us out. We're on Twitter, on Facebook, Instagram, Gun District. We're all over the place. So thanks again for your time. Let us know what you think, what questions you have, and uh, we'll see you in the woods.